Hello and welcome to Calvary Chapel Kamaki. Today is the 7th of May 2020 and we will continue our study in the book of Zechariah chapter 14 today verses 12 through 15. So let me read those verses. Zechariah 14 verse 12. And this shall be the plague with which the Lord will strike all the people who fought against Jerusalem. Their flesh shall dissolve while they stand on their feet. Their eyes shall dissolve in their sockets, and their tongues shall dissolve in their mouths. It shall come to pass in that day that a great panic from the Lord will be among them. Everyone will seize the hand of his neighbor and raise his hand against his neighbor's hand. Judah also will fight at Jerusalem, and the wealth of all the surrounding nations shall be gathered together, gold, silver, and apparel in great abundance. Such also shall be the plague on the horse and the mule, on the camel, on the donkey, and all the cattle that will be in those camps. So shall this plague be. So, tough times, eh? A plague. Uh, if I had a title for today's message, it would be, Fear the Lord and Don't Be His Enemy. You know, that sounds easy to understand, but you know, um, when we read passages like today, we see that God who is completely love, also is completely just and righteous, if you will. And so eventually, he's going to take care of our sin problem once and for all. And in this day of the Lord, this seven-day period that we read um, in Revelation and other passages, there's things happening that we don't want to be around for. And that's why I'm so thrilled that the church will be with the Lord during this time. And then the Lord will do this final, beautiful salvation work with the nation of Israel, where all 12 tribes will have a remnant come out in salvation. And they'll be tested through this time, but as fire is tested and purified and refined. But today's passage is one of those things that makes you pause and, and think, wow, uh, th that's tough time. So, you know, when I read passages like that and then I think about our lockdown, I realize this isn't really that bad. For those of us who have a place to stay, that we're locked in, uh, we have food to eat, you know, that's all the grace of God. And so we can rejoice and we can be glad. But you know, the fear of the Lord is important. So let me read some verses that talk about the fear of the Lord. It says in Psalm 111.10, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, a good understanding have all those who do his commandments. His praise endures forever. Proverbs 1, seven. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. Proverbs 9.10. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and the knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. Proverbs 15.33. The fear of the Lord is the instruction of wisdom, and before honor is humility. So the fear of the Lord is throughout uh, Scripture, and it's not necessarily in a corner, you know, hiding um, away from a God who loves us. It's a, it's a reverential respect for who He is. Because, see, God in His love for us, sending His one and only Son, the Messiah, to save us, and now adopting us into His family, and He's our friend, He's our brother, we see all that in Scripture, Sometimes we have to be reminded that he is still sovereign. He is the king of kings and lord of lords. He is the master of everything. We know from scripture that the Messiah, Jesus himself, was there during creation. He's eternal. So he's God the Son. And so the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And so earlier this week I was talking about, even through Second Chronicles 7, 14, praying for wisdom but the main point was seeking the Lord's face. But when we do that, we can ask for things like wisdom and understanding, but that's all going to be um, something that's gonna start in our heart in surrender and humility. And as we're seeking the Lord's face, we have to realize that there should be a kind of a healthy spiritual fear of the Lord. It's a respect thing, respecting God himself. And so when we have a passage like today where there's so many things happening and actually, you know, people's flesh is dissolving and all these things. It makes us pause and think, well, wait a minute. Is this the same God that I know? And, and we can say that, yes, God 
is perfect in every way. Even though he is completely love, in his love, he will punish sin uh, finally and forever. And so let's turn to Isaiah chapter 11. I want to read a, just a few verses from there. It, it connects with our passage today. Isaiah chapter 11, verse 1. It says, There shall come forth a rod from the stem of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. The Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. We're talking about Jesus here the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord. So even from Jesus, we can have this spirit of the fear of the Lord, which is something that's gonna be a good thing. So fear the Lord and don't be his enemy. Uh, let me read from Luke chapter 11, verse 23. Jesus says, he who is not with me is against me, and he who does not gather with me scatters. In Matthew 18, 6, it says, Whoever causes one of these little ones, someone little in the faith, it could be a child for sure, but it could be anyone that's new in the faith. If someone causes one of these little ones who believe in me to sin, it would be better for him if a millstone were hung around his neck and he were drowned in the depth of the sea. See, we're talking about things that are important to the Lord. It's his heart that he's showing us. He's, he's actually revealing his love for us. And, and so in his love for us, he says, if you're not with me, that means you're against me. You're either for him or against him. You're either a friend of God or you're his enemy. There's no in-between. There's no gray. There's no fence that, that we could ride. It's got to be both feet for or against him. That's the way God views things. And he says in his love for little ones, whether they're children, but little ones uh, in the faith, if they're new in the faith, if they're, they're just coming along, and, and if someone comes along and makes them stumble to cause them to sin, it would be better if a rock was tied around their neck and thrown into the deepest part of the sea. That's how much God loves his people. But he's going to take care of his enemies, the ones who decide that he is not for them. The ones who say, and I say this often, that say, um, no, thank you. I don't need God. I'm good enough to go to heaven on my own. And that's very sad because we read in Revelation that those who um, appear before God in a final judgment on their own without the finished work of Christ applied to them, they're going to be judged by their works, their so-called good works, and it's not going to go well. But I'm going to keep this short today. So let's fear the Lord. Uh, let's see him for who he is in totality. Yes, he is love. That, that's God himself. His love for us is amazing. But he is a just and righteous God, and he will uh, at one point completely take care of his enemies. So... We should fear the Lord and let's not be an enemy. And so that's the message today. Um, I hope that it's a blessing to you and that you're encouraged. I pray that you're doing well. And reach out to me if you need to, to chat or uh, just pray together. I would love that. And until next time, God bless.